Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmilkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question is, why do we, as in we as in functional neurologists, chiropractic neurologists, want to activate the cerebellum? And the cerebellum is our little brain. It sits right on the back of our head, uh, underneath our big brain, the cerebral cortex. It contains more neurons than the rest of the cerebral cortex, rest of the brain combined and it coordinates everything. It is, a, it is the conductor. It <clears throat> coordinates actions like reaching to pick up some water and bringing it to my face, or it coordinates thoughts, and it coordinates emotions. And so uh, mood irritability, uh, more being more emotional can have a cerebellar issues, um, thoughts, so being able to multitask or think of a detailed list when you're going to the grocery store, all has cerebellar involvement. And so when we think about the cerebellum, we know that it is not only involved with these actions and motor issues, but it's also involved in cognitive issues and cognitive problems. And it's important that it's very good and uh, viable and working well to improve cognition. So uh, I'm going to talk about a paper and show how cool this cerebellum is. Um, so this paper is from 2017. It's called, it's a big title, Contralateral Cortical Ponto Cerebellar Pathways, Reconstruction in Humans, in vivo, so in, in life, Implications for Reciprocal Cerebrocerebellar Structural Connectivity in Motor and Non-Motor Areas. So basically, uh, to summarize, the cortex connects to the cerebellum contralaterally, so left brain with the right cerebellum, right brain with left cerebellum, and it connects through this pon pontine nuclei, but then also connects through the um, cere or, well, cerebral cerebellum, that's what they're talking about. So, but it also connects the opposite way. So the cerebellum to the thalamus to the opposite cortex. So that's pretty cool. And so I wanna just show, uh, first of all, we do the abstract, and then we'll just show a few of the, the pictures that just look really cool to show how much activation the cerebellum has if we can really work on proper cerebellar involvement. So cerebellar involvement in cognition as well as sensory motor control is increasingly recognized and is thought to depend on connections with the cerebral cortex. So that's what we're just saying. Uh, these cerebral cerebellar connections are contralateral to each other uh, and they include the cortical, but also the cortical ponto cerebellar. Basically, there's just two different areas that are within deep in the brain that there's a connection to before it uh, before they connect to each other. Basically, it's the easiest way to explain it. Um, differently to previous study, okay. So cerebellar cognitive areas are reached by the largest proportion of the um, largest proportion of the reconstructed cerebellar pontine cortical pontine cerebellar um, loop. Uh, or pathway. And so, uh, and then also they found that the major portions of these pathways actually leave the prefrontal cortex and the temporal cortices. So therefore, working on frontal lobe activation and working on temporal lobe activation can affect the cerebellum. And again, the cerebellum is going to also go to that temporal lobe, which is more auditory, more listening, and that prefrontal cortex, which helps affect cognition. So really cool stuff here. Um, here is what I was basically describing. So the cerebellum talks, if we go to the blue, uh, goes through the superior cerebellar peduncle. Uh, these axons go to the thalamus. The thalamus then talks to the opposite cerebral cortex. And then back the other way, cerebral cortex to the pons, pons through the middle cerebral peduncle to the cerebellum. And this loop happens so that there can be direct or constant talk between the cerebellum which is coordinating the cerebral cortex. And it happens the other way too, that's the dotted line, so it happens on both sides. And these pictures are really, really cool. So here's a picture of a brain that's cut kind of like this, right through the center. And they have different ways that they're kind of testing here. Um, and so in A, they're reconstructing it just from the left middle cerebellar peduncle. So the left is uh, right here, 
and they're just from here they're letting this uh, agent move through and it goes to all the left cerebellum a little bit to the right which means the cerebellars talk to each other but then also up a little bit um, into the cerebral cortex then they reconstruct it from the left middle cerebral pinnacle with the target region of interest in the contralateral cerebral peduncle so the cerebral peduncle is right here the cerebellar peduncle is right there and so they just had it targeted there so now they had more going into the area and so this is just the left cerebellum talking to the right cortex you can see how high these these axons go and how much connection there is and then here they just did it one on each side so again showing how much connection is going from this cerebellum to the cerebral cortex and the cerebellum has the is um, somatic somatotopically mapped meaning that different areas of the prefrontal cortex go to specific areas of the cerebellum and specific areas of the cerebellum affect different areas of the body based on different maps in the cerebral cortex and then same thing with the temporal lobe temporal lobe goes to specific areas in the cerebellum so it's all this mapping and so when we the basic of basis of our treatment in neuro rehab when we are activating the cerebellum we are trying to um, make these connections stronger we are trying to rehab get blood flow to these connections and so you might see us do some like complex figure eight movements on one side or the other to activate a certain cerebellum to activate the opposite side of the brain you might see us do some like interactive metronome which is combining that temporal lobe the hearing with some visual with that cerebellum arm movement as well and so again the cerebellum has to coordinate all that so this is something that i just think is really good to look at if you are a patient here or maybe you're going to be looking to be a patient on how we use activity in one part of the brain to activate another that may not be working as well so this is a fun one I, I just like talking about the cerebellum i think it's such a cool structure and how it has the amazing architecture to be able to coordinate so much that's going on in our brain and then for our bodies and so um, please leave questions or comments below um, i will try to answer as many as i can and please leave suggestions of future topics thanks again and have a great day stay healthy